All right, welcome, <laughs> Dynamic Directions community. We're back. Got my buddy Vince here. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. For those of you who don't know Vince, he is the bourbon and scotch extraordinaire here in Owensboro. Um, he's president of our local bourbon society that I've been involved with the last three or four years. And he did our bourbon tasting, I guess it was about a month, yeah. six weeks ago. Yep. Uh, had a fantastic turnout. Um, corn over malt. Corn over malt. <laughs> Um, but as a result of that, I had several requests that we bring him back because you do scotch tastings as well. Yep. So Vince is tonight is going to, we're going to do a little education, I think, like last time, talk yep. a little about scotch and there are some things that uh, you've got ready for us. So when did you, I'll ask you the same question about bourbon. All right. I said, when did you fall in love with bourbon? Do you All remember right. that bottle? Yep. Um, I think it was a Baker's, wasn't it? Uh, Booker's. Booker's. Ah, Booker's. It was a bean product. Yep. Um, so tell me about when did you first, you know, get connected to Scott? Scott. Well, Scott was my first love. So I grew up in New Jersey. I was there until I was 45 years old. You know, New Jersey is a much bigger scotch drinking community than a bourbon drinking community. So I fell in love with scotch uh, in the early 80s. Um, the first bottle that uh, would really turn my head was actually this one. Macallan 12. Actually, so that's a double look, but Macallan 12 was the first first scotch I had. It was like, wow, this is really a, uh, an incredible uh, spirit. And I um, have a huge scotch collection. I was in Scotland last September for a little over a week. I've been to three of these four distilleries in Scotland, so we can talk about that. Um, yeah, I think when you did the uh, bourbon tastes for us at my house in September, you had just just got back. Yeah, I literally got back that yeah. Yeah, it's been a week. I forget if you were either hungover or uh, <laughs> I was trying to recover. Flight. Yeah, my my you know, yeah. recovering from a long flight. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Okay, so that so it started then, and yeah. then it's progressed. So how do you balance this act between scotch and bourbon? I mean, what you know, I just I mean, it's uh, it's a very different. Uh, taste profile, so it's really what I'm in the mood for, you know, um, that, that particular night. You know, I'll go on runs where I'll drink scotch for three weeks, and three weeks straight, and I'll drink bourbon for three weeks straight. So it's just really what I'm in the mood for. Um, I'm fascinated by scotch. I think it's wonderful. I think bourbon's obviously wonderful, but, uh, you know, they're very different. So talk about how they're different then. Okay. Just let's talk about the, the, the flavor profile of a scotch. Okay. So the first thing to realize is this. You know, we talk about bourbon is, is corn rye and, and, and malted barley. And usually the barley is about 10% of that uh, a formula, a grain formula. With scotch, and these are all single malt scotch, and I'll explain that in a second, it's 100% malted barley. So you're drinking barley, you're drinking a malted barley, actually, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. There's three kind of distinctions in, in the scotch world. There's blended scotch, there's blended malts, and then there's single malts. Right? So, a blended scotch, I'll give you examples of these. A blended scotch, um, Chivas Regal, Johnny Walker Black, or some of the more famous blended scotches. What that means is that there's malted barley in there, but it's not 100% malted barley. There's also another grain, usually corn, Dave, uh, or wheat. And it kind of smooths over some of, um, some of the barley. It's really designed for people who uh, are like, that would drink Jim Beam White. Oh, okay. But it's, it's better than Jim Beam White, but it's kind of like they're in that low end uh, of the of the Scotch world. You then move to blended malt. Um, Johnny Walker Green Label, which is a 15 year old, the blended malt. And what that means is that there's it's 100% malted barley, but it's coming from different distilleries and they're blending it together. Okay. And then finally, the highest level is a single malt, and what that means is 100% malted barley from one distillery. So you're actually getting the profile of that distillery which is important because the landscape of Scotland, it lends itself to very different taste profiles. Um, and when you say blended, are you saying source, like it's the mash or it's the actual scotch itself came and for, yeah, together? For the blended malt, yes. it's actually like, they'll come from different distilleries, like Talisker, Glenmorangie, these, and they'll blend those together okay. to come with a specific taste profile. But it's 100% malted barley. Okay. Now, do they do anything along that lines where it's internal, where they take existing products? It's not like to me, you're taking actually different labels of scotch and bringing it together for a blend. Well, Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker, right? right. There is no Johnny Walker distillery at all. So right. think of Jefferson's. Jefferson's okay. a, great, yep. a great example. So they don't, make, they don't make scotch. They just buy scotch. I mean, 
Diageo owns Johnny Walker. Diageo also owns about 25 distilleries in Scotland. So Diageo will go to their distillery okay. and, and blend it together. So okay. Johnny Walker is a label, a rectifier. Okay. Speaking of our terms. Right. Um, these are not, obviously. These are single malt scotches. Um, they're all very distinct. One of the things to know that's a real differentiator between a, besides the mash bill, between a, sc a scotch and a bourbon is a, a scotch is not and is never uh, aged in a new barrel. It's always aged in used barrels, and the barrels can differ. Some are aged in ex bourbon barrels, um, some are aged in what's called a sherry cask, so a, a barrel that had sherry in it previously. Mm -hmm. McCallum is a great example of that. It's one of the reasons I'm glad we picked that one tonight. So, and some are, are will do a double maturation. Glenmorangie is, is the most famous distillery to really begin doing that um, years ago in the early 80s, where they will finish it like like Angel's Envy. Um, Angel's Envy kind of took that from Glen Glenmorangie. Glenmorangie will age it for 10 or 9 or 12 years in a bourbon barrel and then finish it in a sherry cask or a port wine cask mm -hmm. for finishing. The Glen Ranch of Tenwood, which is not finished. It's in a bourbon barrel. It's been aged in a bourbon barrel, and it's 10 years old. Okay. okay. So with scotches, so, so we, what we have here is three Highland scotches. Now, with scotch, the regions of Scotland can have impact flavor dramatically. Um, the first two we're going to have are, are Glen Ranch and McCallum there in the Highlands region. The Highland region is a huge region in central to northern Scotland. Within that region is another region called Speyside, which has a lot of distilleries as well. But it's a Highlands region. They're known for fruity um, flavors, maltiness. They're not known for smoke. And we'll talk about smoke when we get down to the, the end mm -hmm. here. But they're really, uh, they can be delicate. This, this first one is a very, a very delicate scotch um, that we'll be drinking. It's Asian bourbon barrels. You know, one of the reasons, one of the interesting things is every one of these has an age statement on it. And that's kind of more important for a scotch because with bourbon, sometimes age, the older it gets, the worse it gets. But in Scotland, with scotch, it's totally different. First, think of you're in a uh, you're not you're in a used barrel, okay? So you don't have you don't have the vibrancy of a you know newly charred barrel. The second is the temperature in Scotland. It's always damp and and, and it's never hot. Mm -hmm. It's always damp. It's kind of like cool. So the aging process is much slower. And they use what's called dunnage warehouses, and dunnage warehouses are warehouses that only go up a story. Um, so they're always aged pretty low to the ground. So because of that, it takes a lot longer uh, for the mm -hmm. usually the like flavor. Yeah, usually it's 18 year old scotch is, you know, it's, a, it's always better than a 12. I can't think of a 12 year old scotch. Like a McCrown 12, you know, a McCown 18, the 18 is better. There's not a scotch I can think of where it's a lesser, like lesser age statement means a better. Mm -hmm. a better scotch. So it's really important that, in that light. You know, I like where we're starting here with Glenmorangie because if I had to pick a, a scotch, if people didn't, don't drink scotch, like you, Travis, if I had to pick one to start with, it would be this one. Um, it's floral. It's got uh, orange, very much an orange zest on the nose. It's a, I call it a delicate whiskey. It's not going to be in your face, mm -hmm. but you'll get a really good taste by of the maltiness of it. Um, so let's, why don't we start off? Okay. You don't have to ask me twice. So on the nose already, I'm getting an orange. Get an orange peel. I'm getting a little vanilla. I get the, that taste, that smell you probably can't identify as the barley, the malted barley. It's a maltiness. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Um, I, get, I, I almost get like a white wine in this. I was thinking Chardonnay. When like a Chardonnay? Before, yeah. when you were yep. explaining this. Yep, like earlier. a Chardonnay. The proof is 80, is 80 uh, it might be 45 ABV. I think it could be, it is 40. So it's 40 ABV. So 80, 80 proof. 80 right? proof. Yep. So right away, I get. I get orange, I get that white wine, I get a little malt, malt in the middle of the palate. In the back, I'm getting kind of that, that, that chardonnay -ish type of quality with yeah, it. Yeah, that's an easy, yeah. easy on the end there. Yep. I mean, real easy. Yep. So these glasses. I, I felt more of a burn on the tip than I did. Yeah, it, it, it smooths out real quick. Yeah. 
Uh, Young know, Glasgow, we've been working with also all these states. Our um, Glen Cairn Glasgow that comes from South. So we, we kind of, the burden we put to kind of inherit the class in the first place that we're going to work with. Yes, I kind of like this. Yeah, it's good. Mm. See, the thing you got there, too, that thing, you, that, that other, the box you got has samples oh. of the of the ones that we talked about that are finished in a sherry cast I and see. finished in a pork cast. So you can take this as a, as a baseline, and you can see how those cast finishes really import flavor, different flavors to the, the scotch. Yeah, that was good. So this, this distillery, I went to this distillery, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It sits kind of in the middle, upper uh, eastern part of Scotland. It's on the water. Um, it reminds me of Woodford Reserve, the look, only mm -hmm. with an ocean in front of it. Okay. Think of it in that terms. Yeah. Like That's I would nice. say, if you like Four Roses, you'll like that. Like I, I would transition to person for Bourbon and Scotch, and if you like Four Roses, I saw you right there. I'll see what you think. What about um, out there in, the, in our tasting world? Dave, I'm going to call on you. Yeah, what I was going to say is um, one of the things we talk about when we do our tastings are where you actually feel it and taste it on your tongue. You're going to feel it could be in the way back of your mouth, or I think you said, Travis, I felt that the tip was a little sharp mm -hmm. or on the sides. So you, talk, you can taste different scotches in different parts of your mouth. Um, and the finish, again, as you were saying, is very important. Is it a long finish? Is it is quick and sharp? Does it just end? Um, so these are some of the things that we like to point out to people when we're doing these. Yeah, when you're, when, when you're right there. When you're, when you're talking about single malt scotches, you, you, use, you very rarely have a short finish with a single malt scotch. You're, I mean, you're getting the best the uh, still has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there are there are 12 year old uh, Glamouranges and 18 year old 18 year old that's just beautiful. Think of that on kind of like the more complex, more rounded, right. longer, even a longer finish. Longer finish. It's a beautiful scotch. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Woodward, Scott and F, what, what's your thoughts on this one? I see that you're trying to talk. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah. All right. It wasn't, yeah. Um, what is the appropriate volume for tasting? <laughs> uh, I'll give you a non-technical answer, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Vince. Um, I, I found you keep tasting it until you like it, but you know, so that that takes a little bit. I can't or, that. right? I can't disagree with that. So um, yeah, I mean, again, with when you're tasting any whiskey, to me, less is more. Unless you put it in your mouth. You want to roll it around your tongue and then swallow. And then to Mark's point, concentrate on, I concentrate on the front, the mid, and the back. Mm -hmm. And I see how it's, how it's changing in, those, in, those, in that context. Are you, and you're doing a little bit of an open mouth, a little air in there? Always, yeah. When your nose is, you know, as before, you want like to keep your lips like. parted. So you definitely so like you know, when you're I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. Kind of like when you're tasting wine, breathe in uh, through your mouth while you're tasting it, more or less. You're nosing it. it. Well, when you're nosing it, yeah. Yes. 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 Like I said, for you guys that who have not uh, had scotch before, I think you're muted. We can't hear y'all. Looks like Ben has the mic muted. Now we can hear you. Can we? Hello? I hear Sherry, I don't hear anyone else. Ben? 
Ben, your your mic is muted. Sherry, can you hear me? I can hear you, David. All right. How about now? To her there, there. there. There we go. Okay. So, um, anybody else want to share what how the tasting fit them on the Glenmorangie? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next one. So the next one is a uh, McCallum 12 year old double cap. Uh, a single cap, this is a double cap. We'll explain that in a second. So McCallum is another Highland uh, single malt whiskey, probably the most iconic on its back in the world. Um, this, is, this double cap, what, what this is doing is it's using American oak. That's been seasoned in sherry, and then European oak that held, actually held sherry, a Spanish oak that actually held sherry in it. So they. So when you say seasoned, tell me about that because I've heard that term before. Yeah, so it's so it's a, it's a it's a it's a uh, a barrel, and seasoned means that they put it they they will we'll put it in there and then they'll pull it out. It hasn't been aged long in it. I but think, but they but it won't. But be, it'll have the remnants of it. Have the remnants when of they pull it out. Right. Okay. Okay. So McCallan, the big difference between McCallan is is the casks. This is a sherry, uh, what's called the sherry uh, single malt. It's aged in sherry casks. Um, that's what it's known for. They pride themselves on the quality of casks. They always have. There's an 18-year-old expression. You know, when I was growing up, I used to get McCown 18 all the time. It was 86 bucks. And now I think it's like $350. Oh, wow. And the, and the 25-year-old was like 250 bucks. Now it's like over 1000 So. Um, and that's what you're paying retail at the store? Yeah. Not like no, that's retail. Okay. It's yeah. So immediately on the nose, you got much different taste profile, much different nose, mm -hmm. and what you're getting is sherry. Um, the predominant flavor here is sherry. And with sherry, you're getting some more dark fruits, raisins. Um, that's what I get anyway. You guys get what you, you get. What you get. I mean, your palate is your palate. But I'm getting like I'm getting like rum rum soaked raisins in it. Yes, definitely. Getting nice like caramel in the back with it, subtle. This has a more just a, a distinct sweetness yes. in the smell yep. than the, the first one. Yeah, I think it's sherry. You know, it's mm -hmm. sherry it is a sweet, the sweet, uh, sweet cordial actually, or wine. That's great. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a great. I mean, that's a great scotch. Um, it's got incredible balance. You don't get any of the, like, that tangle you got with this one on the on the um, on the tongue. It's it's got a nice long finish to it. Yeah, it's still lingering in there. Yeah, you're getting some dark some dark fruits in it. Almost like a plum, dark cherry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, plum. Good. Yeah, that's good. Traps, very good. That's plums is definitely good. Uh, I'm thinking impressed. about the dark fruits. I'm very impressed. I've been studying for this. <laughs> well, I can tell a distinct difference when you talk about age, especially when we were with the bourbons. Yeah. You know, those, those younger bourbons typically hit me on the tip of the tongue pretty hot, and you, yep. get, you get the flavor at the end. This, you're getting the flavor right from the get-go. Yeah. I mean, it's not waiting. It's, it's no. hitting your tongue, and it's it just exploding. But it's, yeah, it, 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 I mean, I get the waiver flavor, but this is really nice. Mm -hmm. You get the wave of flavor with this with this single malt. Um, the reputation is deserved. It's a really, really nice scotch. This is also a Highland scotch. You know, McCallum is one, is one of the three I did not go to. Uh, it's in the central part of the country. It's not on water. And that's the sink of, I will, I will, as we move, if we, as we keep moving west, we'll see why. Okay. But this is the only one of the four that's aged in a sherry cask. The other three that we're having are all aged in bourbon casks. Okay. Dave, what, what's your thoughts on this one, my friend? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is actually one that we've used in our tastings that has actually won. So what we do is we'll do maybe six different single malts. And then, you know, we'll either do by region or, you know, by we might focus, we go from PD to least, least PD. And I think we're probably going to talk about peatiness at some point. Um, yeah. uh, 
this 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 single malt has won our scotch tastings out of the ten or so we've done, um, and it's one it's smooth. Uh, the flavor doesn't jump at you. It it just it finishes just as gracefully as it starts, in my opinion. So. That's a good word. Graceful is a good word. Dave. It's a very elegant. It's a very elegant scotch. Mm -hmm. It's very graceful. Mm -hmm. What about you, Scott and F? Go ahead. Aaron. I don't know if I can really respond on the quality of the finish or anything of that nature, but uh, that's all right. It's hit, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hitting the spot and it's winning my category right now. Okay. All right. So you like the calendar and the glamour engine? I, I so have far. had occasion to take uh, the Oban with Gilbert, so I'm anxious to try the 14 year. Yeah. Okay. Johnny, hey, how about Johnny Randall? Are you smoking a cigar yet, or are we just still sticking with the scotch? I don't think I'm on. Oh, he's not on? Okay. Sherry, are you uh, are you tasting with us tonight? Uh, I am here for viewing pleasure only. Um, my stomach's not ready for you. I still just yet. <laughs> I, I need to talk to you about your standards right, related yeah. to viewing pleasure. Yeah, I mean, if you're just that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you I'm not. Right. Steve, how about you, Steve? I don't know if Steve. I don't think his audio is on. Okay, I'm trying to make sure we go through everybody here. If I missed anybody. Okay. No, I, I think uh, I, I actually would side with Scott on this one. Like like so better? far, so I. I really like that. So it, it's, it's not like no, I'm and they're different. Um, but if I had to choose what I'm going to like snuggle up to the fireplace tonight with this or that, I'm probably going with the McAllen. All right. All right. Now we're going to move. We're still we're still going to be in the Highlands region because don't forget the Highlands region is it's huge. It encompasses a lot of this a lot of the country. But we're moving way west, like like three and a half hours west, right on the coast. Okay. And right on the coast is a little fishing village called Oban. And in the middle of the village, they built a distillery. Actually, the, actually, the village was built around the distillery. And what's interesting about the distillery, and I've been to this distillery, it's not only in the middle of town, it's right in the middle of town, but it's also built into a cliff. So you cannot, the distillery can never expand because there's no room to expand. So it's literally built into a cliff. So again, this is the Highland Scotch. Um, I immediately get apricots on the nose. I get a lot of oh, fruit. A lot of that. Yeah. Absolutely. But underneath the apricot, I'm getting some salt. And as you're moving to the coast, and you might get more in the taste, Travis. As you're moving toward the coast, the scotch is being aged on, on the water, on the ocean. So you're getting that salt air coming in and hitting the, the warehouses. Mm -hmm. And you're getting some salt, uh, a little bit of salt. I get on the finish on this a lot uh, in the back. So here you get apricots. You're getting, you get a lot of fruit. I mean, a lot of fruit. It's totally completely different. It's beautiful. A little bit more viscous, a little thicker in the mouth. 14 years old. As it moves back, the finish kind of is to me, it's kind of a drying finish. That's the salt you're getting in it. Yeah, it is dry. So in the front, it's kind of fruity and sweet. As it moves back, you get that kind of salty dryness. It makes your mouth water. It makes you want more. Well, I think the, yeah, the longer it has actually sat on my tongue. Yeah. What you just described was happening. Yep. Drink it. Drink more. Yeah, it makes it makes your mouth water. Makes you want to drink more. It makes you want to drink more. So you can see, like, one of the things I always point out, and I'm gonna go with Dave on this. So the difference in the taste profile is that they're all malted barley. Mm -hmm. All four of these are all 100% malted barley, but yet the taste profile, 
be whether how they malted the barley, the cast, the cast they used to do it. You know, there's called first fill cast, which are bourbon casts that have had bourbon in at one time. Okay. Okay. So like you'll get a Balvenie first fill. Uh, that's a 12 year old. It's, it's beautiful. That means that cast has only been used once. So the second time they're using is right then. But they can use cast three or four times, and they and they may want to. They might want to dull it to get more of the new make or the, the actual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, distill it, distill, distill it in the profile. So there's a whole slew of things you can do from, um, from barrel aging, where it's aged, that really impacts flavor dramatically. As you can see, by this beer, it's completely different. Yeah, very good. Scott, how does this run rank for you, you and Mark? Because you said you'd had this before. Oh, man, I'm not I, – I may or may not have had the 14 year. I, I like it, and I don't know. One of the uh, things that comes to mind uh, is that peatiness that was mentioned earlier. I feel like I'm tasting that or smelling that a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, you're getting a little bit of that, Scott, in it. Um, I understand what you're saying on that. Um, I get more salt in the back. I don't get a lot of smokiness on that. Do you get smokiness on that? I, I didn't get much smokiness. I did notice that on the way in, I, I, I took a, a breath. Yeah. And I did get a little bit of that peatiness he talked about on the breath as yeah. it was hitting the tongue. Yeah. But it's subtle. It's not. Yeah. It's it's not like you know ugh, really right. jumping out at me. Right. Um. So let's talk about uh, malting, okay? Because when we go to the last one, we go to kind of is really. You have to understand malting. So malting is in distilleries and some distilleries, um, they have malting floors. So they bring in the barley, okay? And they want to germ they want to trip the barley. They want it to start germinating, but then they stop it. They want it to open it up so they get the flavor. But then what they do is they have a, a, a malting floor, which is a floor that has really small holes in it, and it's got an underfloor. And they'll have wood. Um, or other things, we'll get to the other things in a second, that it might be gas, uh, gas driven, like fire, gas fire driven, mm -hmm. or the old fashioned way was actually put logs in there and have the smoke come up through the floor mm -hmm. and dry the barley, okay? So these are using a regular uh, wood or, 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 or that could be fired by you know, you know, propane or butane, okay? When we move to the next one, and we move to any smoky scotch, um, what they're doing is they're putting peat, wood or peat moss, mm -hmm. which the island of Iowa, which we'll start talking about, the whole thing, they have peat barges, so a huge peat thing. And what they do is they put peat underneath the floor, and they smoke that. And when they smoke that, it gets into the barley. So when they distill it, you get a much different taste profile, which you're going to see. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's ask Dave real quick what he thinks. Dave, you and Max. Yeah. Good to see you, Max. Good to see you. I've, I've caught up. Thanks for having me. Appreciate that. And you just handled a very difficult. You're welcome. So he had three of those in the last <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds. Um, well, I, I, I was kind of looking down. I, I thought you were shooting some there for a moment. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, so going, going back to Mark's question, how much do you need to taste it? You know, Max is shooting right. the top of his face. Yeah. So, Dave, what, what's your thoughts on the on the open? That's well, first of all, this is all we had left in our bottle. <laughs> um, and uh, it's one of our favorites here. We like this one a lot. Um, the finish is so long compared to other scotches. It just takes forever to just get out of the out of your mouth, and you can still can almost nose it off the breath. It's it's amazing. But one of the things you guys said was. You know, I heard this, this, the chocolate, the dark uh, aroma and the salt. And so one of the other things we do with our single malt tastings is we always do a food pairing. And this always goes with chocolate. It always does. The salt and the chocolate um, is always a hit. So we did, we, we did one of those days, we did a salted caramel cheesecake. It was, was, yeah. that, was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. No, I, I love the pairing. Uh, the best one I've been is Angel's Envy. Yeah. Dave, when you when you go to Angel's Envy to the distillery, and at the end when they do the tasting, they have chosen chocolates for each one of the bourbons that you taste. 
And uh, it's like two small pieces, but it, it's, it's almost too much, really, when you think about it yeah. in, a, in a tasting setting. But, no, very cool. Max, what do you think? I guess, I guess you contributed to the emptying of that bottle. Is that, is that what we're hearing? Very much so. This was actually one of my favorites. Um, my my all time favorite is Lagavulin, uh, but Oban always has like a longer finish, kind of like an accordion. You know, it just stretches out um, as opposed to the other two, which are kind of fast and loose. And so this one, it just kind of has like a complex amount of flavors that combine in, and and it's one of my favorites. But um, I don't get the like super peatiness of a Lagavulin, where I'm like literally just taking a grain of the earth and just shoving it in my mouth, uh, but this one. I was gonna talk about lava glue. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, we did refill the uh, Oban 14. So we're <laughs> good for you, good job, good job. Good for you, good for you. Uh, All right, so you wanna move, for, we're yeah. moving towards the coast. All right, well now, so now we're gonna get some smoke involved. Now we're, we're, yeah, so we're, we're at Oban, we're on the coast. We're gonna drive an hour and a half down, south. Gonna get on a ferry. I'll take a two hour ferry ride out to an island. And it's the island of Islas. So Scotland is known uh, for not only the mainland, but they have several different islands where they have distilleries. Uh, the island of Skye has Talisker, which is a very famous Scotch. The island of Orkney has um, Highland Park. Campbellton has Springbank and uh, Glen Scotia. But the most famous island, uh, Iran, has, has the island of Iran. The most famous island is the island of Isla. So it's, it's spelled I-S-L-A-Y. It's not Isla. Island, okay? There's only 3,200 inhabitants on the island of Island. There's nine distilleries. Um, there, what yeah. a ratio. Yeah. What a great place to live. Yeah, it is. So when you come into that island, I'm going to say the three most iconic distilleries are within one mile of each other. There's Lafroy, there's Lagavulin, and there's Ardbeg, which is this one. I went to all three of those. There's also Bowmore, I mean, uh, Brooklady, there's also other great, great distilleries there, but the really iconic ones that are known for their smoke are, are Lafroy, Lagavulin, and Ardbeg. So they are really the most beautiful settings you'll ever see. I mean, they, they are distilleries on an ocean that is just mind-bogglingly beautiful. So what you're doing here is this is where the malting takes, use that peat moss, that peat barge, and when they trick, they germinate the barley, when they dry it from underneath, it's coming up through the peat, which is smoky. And mm -hmm. you get that ingrained in the barley. So this is gonna be a much different taste for you. Got it. They usually come on, uh, the, usually the uh, Isla's uh, Lafroy's in a green bottle, Arbeck's in a green bottle, Black and Bull's in like a dark brown bottle. The reason they do that is they don't add any coloring to this. It's, 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 it's this this, this is the lightest color. Right one that we've seen. And they, and, they, and they do that because in the old school is like, and you could you can add coloring to, by the way, the scotch. Um, you so that's within the, the guidelines? Yes, you can add coloring. You, you, uh, so how do they usually do that? E150 caramel. It doesn't, it doesn't leave a taste profile. It just makes it darker. Okay. Because, they're, you know, the general consensus is darker is better. Mm -hmm. But they put it here because darker is not better. That's a, that's a misnomer. Um, but notice this one. Oh, why? Wow. <laughs> that is way different. So this you're getting that peat. And you know, with, with Ardbeg and Lafroy and Lagavulin, they're all very much smoky, but there's different kinds of smoke. I mean, Lagavulin to me is a more fuller, honeyed smoke. Lafroy is more medicinal. And to me, Ardbeg is, and this is going to sound bad, but it's not. It's more like a, it's an ashy smoke to me. But it's, I mean, a 10-year-old, an iconic, it's one of the best, I mean, it's one of the best scotch in the world. But you're even likely going to hate it. Do you get like a menthol with this? Yeah, absolutely. I get like, I get the grassy thing, too. I do, I get, I get like a grass and a long grass. I keep smelling for that after I told almost you about like a, that. Almost like a yeah. lemongrass, almost, you know? What, what Vince is referencing, I, in, in my homework, I, I looked at some different, companies that gave taste profiles, and it said the nose on this had grass clippings, not just regular grass clippings, it was an extra long cut on a wet day. Yeah. So. You know, I, you get it. So you're sitting right on the ocean with this, you're having a dram, and you're looking at the ocean, and you're getting this. 
most people when they start drinking these, they can't get past the smoke. But if you can get past the smoke, there's a beautiful underlying fruitiness, a little sweetness under it, that is which, which is really the distillate. And to me, the smoke kind of sits on top. I feel like I'm having a barbecue in my mouth. Yes. I mean, in a good way. I yeah. mean, I, it's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm tasting. I don't know what you said. Like, ash. I almost yeah. That's like tastes like hickory. Yeah. Yeah. Like a campfire. Like, mm -hmm. like almost, and almost like a, almost like a cured meat, you know, in the back. That's a good descriptor. Got oh, it. that is completely different than anything we've tasted oh, yeah. tonight. And you get saltiness. It's right, on the, it's, it's right on the ocean. You're getting a saltiness to it, too, but kind of get masked by the smokiness, but there's a saltiness to this whiskey as well. Mm. Very good. It's beautiful. So, Scott, Mark. How's this one hitting you? I haven't tried it. I'm still smelling it. <laughs> Are you afraid? afraid? Jump in, man. You'll be fine. Travis it did it. A little, it. Like, it smells a little bit like a permanent marker to me. You know, a lot of people say Band-Aid. Band-Aid. Oh. I read a couple different that I, I didn't yeah. smell the Band-Aid. If anything, I smell maybe an, an adhesive. Yeah. Uh, not I, necessarily the band aid. Right, right. Yeah, it turns some people off. I, it doesn't turn me off. I, I love it. The last one. Wait, Scott? Uh, old, What's that? Go ahead, Mark. The old, band, the old band, I really like the smell of. Um, to me, that was. But not this smelling. one so much? It's, it's different. It's very different. Definitely has a good taste to it, though. Oh, you taste it? Good. Yeah. Scott, anything to add there? That's very good. I'm not qualified to add. I'm learning a lot here listening, for sure. <clears throat> okay, to be honest cool. With you, I never drank and, and referenced all these different items about, so it kind of opening my eyes a little bit. I mean, I drink it, enjoy it, and it gets to where I want to be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think it's interesting. My, my wife's a, a big-time foodie, and so over the years I've learned, kind of like what you said, you know, I eat something that tastes good, and yeah. then she appeals back all that went into it, whether it's the ingredients yeah. or how it was prepared and what region, you know, the ingredients come from, and, and you come to appreciate what you're eating at that point. In this case, we're talking about, you know, scotch. It could be anything. But when, when you learn that, Scott, that behind the scenes of kind of how it all is made up, mm -hmm. it does add, a, I think, you know, some interest, you know, that, that makes it even more engaging to me why I want to do this. Yep. You know, and in, in the rest of the country, too, you have uh, the Northern Highlands. We have, like, Old Pulteney, I believe, is the most northern distillery in Scotland. That has a very strong – that has the most saltiness of, like, of any scotch I've ever tasted. I love it. It's great. And then you go into southern Scotland, you're in the lowlands. The lowlands are different. The lowlands, you're close to Ireland. Now, Irish whiskey is always known for uh, triple distillation. These are, these are all double distilled. But lowland scotches, um, Glen Kinch, there's not a lot of them. Glen Kinchy, Auchentoshan, um, Bladnock, they're all triple distilled. So they're moving in that path of an Irish whiskey, which is more, a more delicate whiskey. You know, a triple distillation will, will strip out a little more flavor. So you're getting a very nuanced, delicate um, whiskeys in the lowlands region. And as you move from the Highlands and Space Side, you're getting more fruity. Highlands are a little more powerful um, from a taste profile standpoint. Uh, I would almost classify Glamorangia as a Space Side if I had to, even though it says Highlands on it. It's in that Space Side kind of taste mm -hmm. profile for me. And then, of course, you have the Islands. And the Islands are very different. You know, Orkney, you have Highland Park. Highland Park, they call the all everythinger because it's got a little smoke and it's got a little fruitiness. It's got a little bit of everything in it. But it's not. A smoke, not as much smoke as this, as mm -hmm. Okay, and then you go into the uh, sky. You have the Talisker, which is an, which is uh, that was probably a very aggressive Scotch. It's, got, it's smoky. Um, it's got a very distinct taste profile. I love it. And as you move down, um, you get into Isla. You get into Iran, which is, has one distillery on it, Isla of Iran, which is not smoky at all. Um, Isla has nine distilleries. You know, uh, Bunahaben is a distillery in Isla that does, that it makes one. A reiteration of that smoky, but all their main, the 12 year old, 18 year old have no smoke. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the Isla, you still get the Isla kind of profile of it. 
and you go down to Campbelltown, which is the southernmost, and you get uh, Springbank, which is actually my favorite distillery, and Glen Scotia. And there you're getting some smoke, not as smoky as Art Bank, but they, have, they call it the Springbank Funk, and I hate that word, but if you taste it, you'll know what they mean. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a certain taste sensation in the mid palate that's with Springbank, and it's with Glen Scotia as well. They're both made uh, on that island of, of Campbellton. So uh, it's, it's fascinating the, the differences um, in taste when you consider that they're all 100% malt right. barley. They started with the same mash. Right. Actually. Right. Right. Well, I can tell you, I don't know about you guys, I'm going to go to Dave and Max here in a second. The fire's still burning. In other words, the smoke is still just smoldering oh, yeah. in there. Yep. At, at a low, even, you know, I mean, even a, as I'm swallowing or taking a drink of water, in fact, when I took a drink of water, I felt it yep. like kind of flash yep. back up again. Well, what you want to do, if you're drinking scotch on any night, you want to save the, the smoky ones till the end because they will mm. paralyze your palate. You know? They're going to dominate. If you drank this first and then we drank that, you would be like, I can't taste that. Right. This is overpowering that. So you want to go smoky at the back? Always. Always. Dave, Max, what's your thoughts on I said hard bag? Hard bag. Hard bag. Again, this is another one we've had at our tastings and has always done well. Um, for me, it's very hard to get a good nose on this. It's not as strong as some other ones seem to be to me. Um, but also, if you remember what I said before about where you taste it on your tongue, this is more of a level flat. It's not pinching the sides or the top. It's kind of filling the whole palate. I actually felt it on the palate too, up on top a little bit. Um, but is it is. Boone hop in there, Dave? Is that a boon yeah, hop? Sorry. Well, yeah, I was going to show you. Well, I was going to tell you. Uh, my actual favorite, and you use the word I always used, is um, medicinal. And I am just a huge Laphroaig fan. I love it. Yeah. It's definitely an acquired taste. Um, you mentioned Highland Park. We've got the 18 here that we enjoy. And then, yeah, you also talked about Budahagen. That's part of our collection also. And then my favorite here is the Lagavulin. Oh, that's the Lagavulin Distillers Select. Yeah, and uh, gosh, I, I'm so sorry I joined late. What was your name, sir? Vince. Vince. Vince, thank you. I'm Max. Uh, so we, our question was is that we just got this Distillers Edition. We normally go with the other uh, the other one, the, I think a 16-year yeah. uh, age. What's the difference? Yeah. You no, know, like what it says double mature. Yeah, I mean, I think they, they, they distill that one. It's, it's, it's aged in a sherry cask, and then okay. they age it uh, a little bit longer in a, in a, in a toasted ser sherry cask, a little bit different uh, a sherry cask at the back of it. I, that's okay. very good. I, mean, I had that. The distil I, I went to Lagavulin, too. And I had that one. I'll tell you, if you can have the 12-year-old Lagavulin, the cask strength is mind-blowingly good. It's really, really good. But is, is, that's the only... That's the only one that won our tasting twice, is the one you're Bungle. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Well, yeah. Wouldn't that be not as good as the 16 in theory? In theory, but you know what? The 16 is 43 ABV, and mm -hmm. the 12-year-old is 57, 58, and that proof differential, it just lights it up. It makes it just beautiful. I mean, flag and bowl on steroids. Okay. It's, more, it's actually, Max, it's more expensive than the 16-year-old. Yeah, we saw that. We did yeah. We were like, this guy, that has to be a mistake, right? No, it's actually more expensive. Yep. We so didn't expensive. Like that. It is, no, we it didn't. We didn't buy that one yet. We haven't gotten the 12 year. We, we thought, we we thought, thought there was we were a guy. We mistake. thought there was a mistake. So we also want to hear there's a distillery run, maybe 2021, uh, in Islay. Islay? Isla. Isla. Uh, <laughs> where you run from distillery to distillery. So that could be it's a, a really 10k fun. for six distilleries or a 5k for three distilleries. So let's all start training. All right. Yeah, which we're doing now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story. When we went to Isla, we thought, oh, we're gonna go to Isla, and we had a car. We rented a car the whole week, but and we could take the car on the ferry, but we didn't because like you know what? They're just like they're a mile apart from each other. Like it's you know it's before you hit first and lag of Vol and Arbeck, and it's probably a mile and a half. So it's maybe four and a half miles up. Let's get a cab. Well. You know, it's on the 3,000 people, and there's not a lot of cats. So we ended up walking to all three of them and back. So we, we walked 10 miles that day. Uh, it was quite a, it was, it was worth it, totally worth it. But, yeah, either bring a car, get a cab, or run. Well, I think we're seeing the secret to seven, seven Bridges Wealth Management. 
I think their secret to implementation is they serve their clients some really quality scotch no question. in the process of a meeting. And, uh, you know, they're ready to implement by the time they've tasted these scotches. Is, that, is there any truth to that, Dave, Max? It's not a lie. <laughs> no, no. <it's> not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. You should run for office. It's not a lie. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll open it up now. We've tasted all four. I get it totally now going into why we tasted what we tasted. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask everybody what they think their favorite was if they got a question. I'm probably going to go back. To me, I'm torn between these two. Okay. Um, and I probably would lean towards the McAllen 12. Um, but here's the thing. It, I didn't know what to expect tonight. I like all of them. Yeah, that's great. It, it, it's that's not great. like for me there's a, a vast difference. There's a difference in obviously the taste profile, especially right. when we got to this one. But as far as just my likability, I can see myself drinking all four of these. So Scott uh, and and Mark, we'll ask you what were your favorites, and then if you got a question for Vince, I'll go first. Go ahead. Um, my favorite tasting was the our the last one. Um, really, that is certainly um, my impression. I'm not a Scotch drinker by any means. I probably drank Scotch twice in my life before tonight. Um, but it strikes me, uh, there's a huge difference between all four of these, in my opinion. I, I mean, they taste a lot different um, in my palate, I guess. Um, and I, I never realized that different scotches would taste so much different. So that's the impression I have. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mark. What about you, Scott? I know you're kind of first time drinker or not maybe first time just kind of first time analyzing it this way what what are some takeaways yeah. from you and what's your favorite uh the art bag is is what i'm enjoying that's what i hit my glass with again and not just because we went down the line that way but i don't know to me that's more of a traditional scotch and again not that i am a connoisseur but you know over the years i've always kind of gone for that little i guess smokier uh, I think it's more full of flavor, but that could just be my palate. It, it's, you know, I'm not a ratatouille. I can't pull all those other items out of there, but this mm -hmm. seems like there's a lot going on. Any questions? Thank you for, for Vince. Are with one sketch that would be universally appreciated. What would I, what would you suggest? One scotch would be universally appreciated. Well, that's tough because I'll tell you why it's tough. Like if you don't, first, let me, let me make a comment. I'm shocked and very pleased that I heard Ardbeg was the favorite so far. It's my favorite too. So I can give you, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say Springbank 12-year-old cast strength, but it's got a little smoke to it. So if, if you're sitting here today saying, Arbeg's my least favorite, then I would not recommend Springbank 12 year old cast strength. But if you're saying, I like it, like, like Travis, uh, Springbank 12 year old cast strength um, is a amazing scotch. In my, it's, it's one of my top three scotches of all time. I love it. So I would go that direction. I mean, universally though, I mean, McCallum would be one that you know, I, can, I can't imagine anybody not liking McCallum. I can see some people not liking Springbank. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go from mainstream, that the safe bet, it's like, you know, McCallum, any McCallum, people are, are going to like it. If they don't like McCallum, I don't see them liking any kind of scotch. If you want to go out, you know, a little bit away, Springbank 12, cast strike. Thanks, Mark. Well, Good and question. I, and I guess, yep. I guess um, you know, maybe the, is it Glen Morangi? Glen Morangi? How you spell it? Yep, the first one. Um, to me, the first two were a little bit closer to, um, like, I, I like to drink bourbon. To me, they were a little bit closer to uh, a bourbon taste. I yep. mean, that's why Travis liked, it, liked those two better. Um, but, I, you know, I just kind of think if I was going to have a bar and I have bourbon, then I want the scotch to be different. You know, so maybe that's why yeah. I like the hard, hard bag. Yeah, that's a great comment. 
you know, I don't know well, at the beginning I said, you know what, I was on the travels, I said, if, I, if you were a bourbon drinker and never had scotch before, I would, I'd recommend Glen Marangia 10 because it's kind of in that profile and it's gonna, you're going to put your foot in the water mm-hmm. and you see if you like it. But I'm with you. I like your concept of I want something different. Yeah, our big, I'll, I'll still stand by Springbank 12-year-old cast rank. It's just a magnificent scotch. Not that easy to get because it's a small story. Hmm. Okay. All right. Scott, any questions before I go to Dave and Max? No, all set. Thanks, guys. Cool. So, Dave, Max, I mean, obviously, you talked about you've had these in your own tasting. Um, I think I already know the answers on what your favorite is, but let's hear it anyway. We agree. Before we, yeah, we agree. It's the bottle that's already empty. So, it's the Oban 14. Oban, Oban yep. Um, but also, we just ordered the Springbank uh, tw- 12 as we were talking. So, yeah. we have that delivered. <laughs> All right. You let me know what you think. Pick it up on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll get it here somehow. <laughs> but um, I didn't like the Macallan 12, to be honest. It just didn't. It didn't sit well with me. I was actually impressed with the Glen Morangi. Gosh, I can't, right. I'm gonna pretty uh, butcher that. That was fine. I, I it was really smooth. Um, Ardbeg was. It, it definitely was a surprise. I had never had it before. I, it's been sitting there for a while, collecting dust, but. Uh, hit me in like a taste that like went up and then down. Like it was just like a very strong taste and then bam, it was over. So um, it was uh, Dave at prom night basically. So um, <laughs> still a uh, still a Lagavulin lover though. I think that the Lagavulin 16 year just hands down like the the pine the the um smokiness the texture it doesn't burn like it just hands down my absolute favorite experience so excited to try the 12 you know, Matt, spring bank I, I i got asked a question once if you had one scotch you can bring to an island and that's the last scotch you ever drink which what would you bring my answer lag of one sixteen. nice wait until what was I, the question until I taste the 12 year old. oh awesome yeah great yeah well, I'm, I'm with you i'm with you it's a great great scotch yeah, that's why we get along, Vince. Right. You're such good friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, Highland Park is one of my favorites besides the Lagavulin, but I had a Highland Park 25 uh, yeah. year, which was just, oh, my God, I wish I that I could sell Max so I could get more <laughs> of that because it's too expensive, but it was just <laughs> delicious scotch. My so checks aren't big enough? No. <laughs> I don't know if you buy <laughs> Vince or not, but the 25 Highland Park. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, anybody have any questions for Vince as we wind down here on our scotch tasting? I have a question for you, Travis. Yes. Are you wearing pants? <laughs> he better be. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've got I've got cowboy boots on. My All right. Jeans. All, right. All right. Good. Just checking. There we go. <laughs> That's good. Hey, Vince, thanks again. This is awesome. Yeah, that was great. Thank My you. Pleasure, guys. <clears throat> My pleasure. I love doing it. Well, thanks again for everybody being here. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I- I'm going to have to bit something in front of Dave right now. I know. Dave, I-, I might drink scotch with you the next time I see you. <laughs> so, Travis, we have, well, a uh, we have a call tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can have yours and I'll have mine. <laughs> that's right, because that's how it works there. You drink, you drink with your clients on your appointment. I'll do the same. Yeah, there you go. So, so, Vince, thank you again for oh, another great pleasure. tasting. Um, we look forward to connecting with everybody very soon. Stay tuned. We're moving out of uh, social gatherings involving the umbrella of whiskey. We're going to get back to business. You'll see next month, starting in July, we're going to start a target and harvest series on marketing, or as our good friend Dan Gam would say, marketing. First segment is going to be around digital marketing and social media. I'm really excited about that. So thank you, Dynamic Directions community. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Jenny, for doing all the stuff behind the scenes. Have a good night. Slash up.